morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in this world. Welcome to my channel. My name is Raymond Speaks and here we talk about everything mental health. So today I've got a bit of different topic for you. I was discussing with my wife what to make next. I was running out ideas for content and she said to me that wouldn't it be good if I made a video about the pressures that people that care for others with mental health problems face. And I thought, what a great idea because I've been on both of those sides and so has she. So let's get on with the show. Living with someone that's been in psychosis or has severe mental health problems. First and foremost, you need to look after yourself, right? You are number, you are always number one. Prioritize yourself. Here's why. We always had a saying at work, right? I was, in my last job, I was really taught to look after myself, to protect myself lawfully and to have every side covered. And there was a saying at work, they said, if you can't do something as basic as look after yourself, how do you expect to look after anyone else? To think about that, it rings true, doesn't it? If you aren't well enough to look after yourself, how are you well enough to look after anyone else? Let that think, okay? Think about that, let that sink in. I was taught quite a lot about helping myself and protecting myself lawfully and just, helping and protecting myself in every way possible. But what I realized is there's literally zero help for any friends or family men, members of someone that's going for psychosis. The people that are going through this mental health problems, they got doctor's appointments, they're getting treated. But people who are on the sidelines and looking in, there's no help for them whatsoever. It's just get on with it, dude. I know that can be really hard and quite trying at times, especially the demands that people like me put on you guys. I mean, I could remember shouting at my mum because she didn't take me on holiday. I demand, she should be taking me on holiday with her. But it's not her, that's not her responsibility. She's got her own life to lead. Why am I demanding this? And there was an also another time when I remember phoning up auntie and uncle. They have a caravan up in the woods in Scotland somewhere. And that was like my peaceful getaway place. And I remember asking to go up there and they were a bit reluctant at first. And in the end, they eventually agreed with me, but I really, really badgered them and put on the guilt. They were just wanting to go and have their own time up there. And I look back at that and I really feel quite bad about that. But that's nonetheless, you know, they were putting my needs above theirs and they shouldn't be doing that. And I remember personally feeling really angry and not having what other people have and not being able to do what other people can do. And that was really frustrating for me. So I lashed out at the people closest to me. They bore the brunt of that. And there was absolutely no help for them whatsoever. There was no respite, no nothing. And that could be quite trying because it's difficult for me, yes. There's all these things that I used to be able to do, but I can't anymore. And because I can't, I was frustrated and I was just, I was lashing out at everybody close to me. And it's always the people closest to you that get it. So yeah, you need to, you, you, you really, really need to look after number one first. If you're looking after yourself properly, then you're in a good position to look after other people. And you know, with with all that lashing out that, for instance, I do, family members can build up quite a bit of resentment or resentment that they're not even the ones with the problem. And I know it's quite, quite difficult talking about this or, or quite controversial talking about this, but... It can be quite difficult for family members as well. And because there's no help and no one seems to care, a lot of resentment can build up. That makes sense. And then at once the resentment starts building up, you then start to feel guilty for being resentful because in one sense, you, you sort of empath emphasize with the person who's going through mental health problems and you understand that it's really difficult for them. And then you know yourself is having a difficult, and then you have all these conflicting emotions like for instance, you say, but it's not my fault either, but then I shouldn't feel because I'm not the one going through the problems and all this, you know, guilt. And it's, it's really tough. <laughs> it is, I, under, I mean, I really understand that. I really emphasize with that. It's not easy. It's quite normal if you feel resentful, feel guilty about it, because that is a normal emotion. But how do you manage it? How do you sort of manage your life so you're not building up anger, you're not building up resentment, you're just, doing the best that you can whenever you can. Here we go. So take regular break, breaks, right? Even if it's for 30 minutes to a couple of hours, just get out and go and do something that you love. Do something that you love, right? They'll be fine. You don't need to be with them all the time. 
right? They'll be fine on their own. They always have been. Go out, do something that you really love, whether that's creating a blog post or going to the pub to meet your friends or, you know, whatever. Just do what you love and be around people that you love, yeah? And just, even if it's for 30 minutes or a couple hours, just go and do what you need to do, yeah? Take take some you time or get away from it all. You need you need these breaks. You can't be in it all the time and you just go stir crazy. Go for walks with plenty of air. I know, I know a lot of people don't do this, but the wonders of walking in the fresh air is phenomenal. The first time I ever found out about the proper healing aspects of just going for a fresh air walk for 30 minutes was when Alex was really, really young. And I remember he was, we were struggling to get him to sleep, so we just put him in the pram and I'd take him out for a walk for 30 minutes. And that in itself was very, very healing. So yeah, go for walks on your own. It's another way of getting away from it. Get regular sleep, okay? So whatever you do, make sure you sleep properly. Even if it's not at the expected times, get regular sleep. I, mean, I can't place the amount of emphasis on how much wonders getting a proper night's sleep does for you. I'm not a good person who copes well with a, little, a lot less sleep. So sleep works wonders for the mind. Get regular rest, get plenty of rest, okay? Exercise plentifully. When I go out and I go to the gym or I go for a run or I go for a bike ride, when I get back, I feel amazing, right? Exercise increases those happy hormones. It's a great way to get rid of that and dealt with anger. It's just get rid of it, punching a bag or riding it out on a bike or running or whatever. And once you've done half an hour, an hour was worth of exercise, you feel amazing afterwards. You might, feel, you might feel tired if you don't do it often, but just exercise lots and plentifully and that will keep your mind nice and balanced. A part, I don't know if you know this, but part of why there's a lot of depression in the world at the moment, amongst other things, is because we don't get enough exercise. Whereas when we were out and about and running all over the place 30, 40 years ago, we just jump in the car now and you don't see a lot of walking. So that's another fact for you. And also has someone that you talk to. Don't be where the buck stops. Okay, so don't have someone unload on you and then just keep it there. Don't bottle that shit up. Have someone that you can talk to. I'll give you a, an insight into counsellors and psychologists. They have their own counsellors and psychologists, believe it or not, because they hear they hear so many things throughout the week that it's so much. They just need to talk to someone themselves, keep their mind on an evil, even keel. So don't just be the person that someone unloads to. Don't let the buck stop there. You need someone in your own life where you can just talk and talk about stuff and unload that stress like a big gravy train and nice un <laughs> unload this. But yeah, make sure you got sources where you can talk to people. And just remember, just remember, right, is your needs are just as important as their needs, right? So don't let anyone else convince you otherwise. Your needs are the most important. So if you are not helping yourself, then that means you're not able to help anyone else at 100%, right? So bear that in mind you help yourself 100%, then that means you've got a full mentality to help other people, okay? If your glass is full with energy and compassion and lovely, then you've got lots to give out. Just make sure you replenish that regularly and you'll be fine, yeah? Fine. I know you will, okay? Thanks very much for listening. My name is Raymond Speaks. Be sure to look at the left and check out my other videos that I've done quite recently and I'm really enjoying this. I hope you guys are too. Thanks very much.